Um, trying to think of a good transition here. Um, yeah, screw it. <laughs> Batman and Harley Quinn. <laughs> so I have had the DVD Blu-ray combo for this movie for a number of years now. I don't know if I bought it for myself when it was on some sale or if I got it as a gift or something. Um, mm. In theory, this this feels like it should have been a slam dunk because it's Bruce Tim coming back to uh, to write and direct a movie that. Is it, yeah, I think he I think he directed this one. Uh, mm. I know he at least co-wrote it. But you know, Bruce Tim, one of the big architects of Batman the animated series and Justice League and all those other shows coming back to uh, write a story about a character that he helped create and popularize mm -hmm. in the form of Harley Quinn. Uh, the, the only problem with this is that, one, uh, the really good Harley Quinn stuff is from the pen of one uh, Paul Dini, mm. uh, who is not involved with this at all. Oh. And the other problem is that... Uh, this is Bruce Tim circa 2017 writing Harley circa 2017. Yeah. Uh, this is latter day Bruce Tim who uh, had the brilliant idea. Oh, we're going to take the killing joke. Uh, you know, I think that if we add the detail that uh, Bruce and Barbara are boning, that'll really <laughs> add a lot to the, uh, to the stakes of the story. And no, this is not just me writing my fetish into it. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I had heard for years that this was bad, but I hadn't. But how to put it? People I'd heard talk to talk about it being bad were all some sorts of people who are like killjoys and were like, oh, you know, one scene in the movie, she bends over and you and the the camera checks out her ass, and it's like, uh, <laughs> okay, so you're so you're dismissing it because of that. Okay, cool. Because that's like that's the type of person they are, right? Right. Yeah. Um. Boy, that was controversial when this thing came out. That is the least of this movie's problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the overall premise of it is it's 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 like they had a really cool idea for a Swamp Thing movie, and they couldn't either. Bruce Tim couldn't get it made because I, th I think after a couple of movies uh, with these straight to video DV, straight to video. Uh, animated movies that DC would make, yeah. they stopped being interested in anything that didn't have Batman or Superman in it. Oh, yeah. So they decided to cram Batman and Robin and Harley Quinn into it. Because mm. uh, the overall premise is that Harley or is that a Poison Ivy has teamed up with the Floronic Man, another plant-themed supervillain, and their plan is to save the world by making it so that like, combining humans and plants. Yeah. So they're, okay. they're usual sort of vague comic book science, eco-terrorism stuff. Yeah. Um, and in the opening scene, Batman and Nightwing try to uh, capture them, but the, the two of them get away, and they decide that, um, that that they'll go find Harley Quinn because, you know, associate of Poison Ivy, just to see if she can figure out where she is. Yeah. Um, so this movie is two things. This movie is three things. There's the actually interesting, cool parts, which are mostly involving Poison Ivy and Floronic Man, like <laughs> because they get into things like the green from the um, from the Swamp Thing th series. Swamp Thing actually shows up at one point before declaring that he's uh, not actually interested in fighting them and just wanders off again. <laughs> um, it, so that's that's kind of interesting. There's the uh, there's the horny part of the movie uh, when they find Harley Quinn. She is working at basically superhero Hooters. So you have you have like girls dressed as Power Girl and Zatanna and things like that. And Harley, of course, is dressed. She is actually kind of dressed not in her real costume, as I recall. It kind of looked more like the sort of tarted up version they had in the Arkham Knights games. Mm. Yeah. And then the third part of this movie, besides the horny, is the, uh, hey, wouldn't it be, you know, we've, we've uh, gotten Harley away from the Joker. Wouldn't it be great if she was Deadpool? Uh, no. <laughs> no, the answer is no. You're correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is a movie that they're dealing with some people, like some people who I think are like 
some uh, there was some DC thing I didn't recognize where um, you ha it was like the equ equivalent of Marvel Shield, mm. and Batman gets them to cooperate with him because Batman has dirt on him and what his mistress is up to or something like it's, it's, yeah. that, it's that kind of horniness. Uh, yeah. They they find Harley at this superhero Hooters. She and Nightwing have a fight and he and she knocks him out. Because you know this version of Harley Quinn is the world's greatest fighter for some reason. When I don't really recall that being her thing from the Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, I don't either. But it's like part of her lore now that she's a hyper good fighter. And mm -hmm. he wakes up and she demands to know why he's after her. And then they proceed to bone. Oh. Uh, yeah. So yeah, if you're if you're uh, if you had Nightwing and Harley Quinn on your shipping bingo, then there you go. Oh, <laughs> and um, what's weird about this movie, and, and then th it's just a few scenes of them trying to, uh, a few scenes in a row of them trying to track down Ivy. Hmm. Here's the here's the weird thing. Um, considering that this is one of the creators of Harley Quinn, or at least somebody who was heavily involved in her creation. It's like he has no idea how to write her. Hmm. Because um, she just ping-pongs all over the place. You're, you're not sure what the mood is actually supposed to be. Hmm. Um, like, is this movie just a pure comedy? Because like, they have a lot of scenes that are supposed to be wacky, and they really aren't. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, that's just needlessly cruel. I like there's a scene where they where she spots somebody and she jumps out of the Batmobile and chases him down, and I don't recall why. I, it's like he just wronged her in some minor way that was unrelated to the rest of the plot. Oh, there's another bit where they show up at some villain bar with a lot of deep cuts for Batman the animated series characters, like minor villains you wouldn't expect uh -huh. to see there. <laughs> And she proceeds to sing a song in costume for two minutes for no reason. I feel like they had like a half hour episode of Batman or of Swamp Thing, and they felt the need to uh, uh, like extend it to make it a actual semi movie length. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's like, it, but like then you have scenes where somebody like a mad scientist who the Floronic Man and Poison Ivy were mind controlling to help them out, breaks control long enough uh, to uh, try to sabotage them, but they manage to get away. But he's mortally wounded, and Harley proceeds to, like, hey, when you get to heaven, tell him, you look up my my nan nan, such and such Isley. You, she's a good, good girl. I think you really like her. <laughs> it's like, why are we having a, a an attempt at a dramatic death scene here yeah <laughs> yeah and so like harley is just like most modern productions the weakness of this movie they, mm. batman is also weirdly out of character because the batman from batman the animated series i cannot see him tolerating this version of harley on the mission as much as he does yeah uh, yeah I, I i seem to recall an episode of the the animated series where uh Joker's doing something, and then Batman has to get her out of Arkham, and she's like goofing around in the Batmobile, and he just chews her up, like, "Don't you do anything, say anything, or anything. <laughs> you got it?" Yeah, yeah, I, I thought that's how he should have responded in mo in all these situations. Yeah, but like he has to go along with it, or else you know she would actually serious up. Yeah, um, I believe Nightwing's original voice actor is back, so you know that's kind of nice. Yeah, good on him. For getting a paycheck, I guess. Yeah. Um, and the weird thing is, is that uh, so at the end, uh, the movie doesn't really end because <laughs> the ending of the movie is uh, Poison Ivy has switched sides, and Floronic Man is about to unleash this stuff that will turn the whole world into human plant hybrids. And the what's interesting is that uh, what it, it's like it's it's unstable. Like it, they haven't quite worked out the kinks. And so it could very well kill everybody. And okay. So poison Ivy is a little bit insane, mm. but I think that she is rational enough to go, Oh, we haven't quite worked out the kinks yet. Okay. We're not in a particular rush. Let's, uh, let's kidnap another scientist and figure this out. 
Yeah. <laughs> but no, so the movie can happen. She has to be in a rush. And as the as does Floronic Man. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> but I think but I think Ivy I think par, um, Ivy switches sides and I'm not gonna I'm not worried about spoiling this movie because again it's a non ending. <laughs> and Floronic Man is like about to fight them and Harley has the idea of, oh well, you know, if plants don't like fire. And then you cut to the credits after I think I think Nightwing and Batman kiss her on the cheek. Like after she has this brilliant idea, it's it's been a couple weeks since I saw it, but no. So you cut to the credits, and then the credits stop, and you see Floronic Man running through the Louisiana Bayou, wreathed in flames. Like, Argh! then you cut back to the credits, and then they have a weird thing where it's like it's like poison. It's like Harley is in her Doctor Pamela Isley persona. Although I think to make oh, uh, a point uh, that she. Uh, Pamela Isley, uh, Doctor uh, Harley Har- Quinzel. Yeah. Harley Harley Quinzel. Excuse me, I was thinking of Poison Ivy there. Yeah, yeah like she's but... back in her actual doctor persona, even though she makes the point that she no longer has a license. And like, like it looks like, like she's Doctor Phil. <laughs> yeah, it looks like she's doing a Doctor Phil thing. Yeah. And then suddenly it turns into American Ninja okay. or Ninja Warrior, where oh. she, this guy, this guy. I think the premise is like in order for this guy to get therapy, he has to beat this. Uh, this gauntlet of prizes. Oh. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. Like that, that was like a post credit gag that they tacked on. I don't think with the credits that this thing quite hit 90 minutes. Oh jeez. <laughs> um now as far as the voice acting cast, it is Kevin Conroy, but it is like late stage Kevin Conroy. Mm-hmm. So like he, he never quite sounded how, how to put it, his voice had definitely aged, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah towards the end unfortunately um he didn't he didn't ever quite sound the same to me as he did back in the day um Mm. i I have to give a special anti shout out to the voice actress they got for harley quinn uh because it was not her originating actress oh it wasn't huh no even though she was still alive at this point i don't know if they just uh couldn't make it happen or what but uh it was uh melissa rauch or Rouch, depending on how you pronounce it. Mm. Um, she's not a major actress, as far as I can tell. Mm. Uh, she's done a few voice acting do, or roles in a few like movies and TV shows I've never heard of. Uh, she is the lead in the new uh, Night Court TV show, so take that, uh, take that for what you will. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, oh, uh, she was Bernadette in The Big Bang Theory. Okay. Oh, I know her. Yeah, she's like um, uh, the blonde. With yeah, the with the big. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, she and unfortunately, she's kind of doing her best um, impression of what's her name, who originated the role. Um, oh, Sorkin. Yeah, of Sorkin. Yeah. Um, she doesn't really do it justice, um, but she's also just given completely dog shit material to work with. So it's like. Is, is she the problem, or is the fact that she's being asked to play a completely inconsistent and stupid character the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm gonna say I'd always heard this was bad. I decided to get it off the to do to watch list after many years of owning the disc. I don't know that I'm going to continue owning the disc after my next run to half price books. <laughs> <laughs> Dump it off here. Take it. Yeah. yeah. I'll, g- give me my 50 cents. I would, I value it more than having this on my shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Batman and Harley Quinn, like any Harley Quinn media made after like 2005, probably, probably worth skipping. Yeah. 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 That's uh uh, not surprising, but um, you know, still unfortunate. Yes. Um, 